In this video, I'm celebrating 30,000 subscribers to Hubnut. With a bus. Hee hee. Amazing. Let's go for a ride. Hubnut, sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. So this is a 1973 Leyland National. Um, it's a bus styled by Giovanni Michelotti, um, the Italian stylist who did the Triumph Stag and Herald and um, even the Reliance Scimitar SS1. And um, this bus began life, uh, it's a shorter National, about 10 metres long, began life on the Isle of Wight and latterly saw service with Pennine um, up here in Yorkshire. And um, yeah, it hasn't got the roof pod, which some had. They used, they used to keep the heating elements um, in there. And nor has it got the original clattering 510 engine, the Leyland 510. It's got a Volvo B10M engine. I think that's the THD 100. And it's even got a little boot box because this is a working bus. Uh, it has got more modern rear lights. Excuse me while the truck hisses in my ear. And um, it has also got a personal plate to mask its age somewhat. But yeah, there we go. Repowered by Volvo. And sadly, I think that box means checking the engine and having a look at it. Probably not going to be the easiest thing, so maybe we won't do that. But um, yeah, Leyland National, very much the bus of my childhood. Uh, they made about 7,000, I think, Nationals. And um, yeah, very interesting bus. Uh, let's let, let's clamber aboard. Oh no! There we go. I haven't got the right technique. So here we go aboard the bus. Uh, the um, cab is somewhat simple. We've got um, an epicyclic air-powered semi-automatic gearbox and the handbrake lever down there and the wiper switch beneath that a few switches under a smartphone we have the same indicator stalk that you'll find in an Austin Allegro and um, that really is it it's not a very comprehensive uh, layout we have got a radio in place of a till uh, but um, yeah this, this one has been semi-converted oh there goes my gimbal again but there we go been semi-converted into a cafe to try and pay for its way because obviously bus preservation doesn't come cheap so there's a couple of um, nationals in service back in the day uh, a really lovely looking bus I think Michelotti did a great job with the styling so we're going to stand at the back the engine is beneath us uh, we've got a cooker a fridge many bungee cords we have managed to get a look under the, the floor of this bus so this is your gearbox uh, all the electronic control is a combination of electronics and air what could possibly go wrong and then the mighty Volvo lump a straight six engine lying on its side gorgeous smell of um, fumes and oil it's absolutely marvelous Well, we're just having a quick run out so um, owner Mark can sort of show me the ropes so to speak so I can see how the gear change works and things like that. I have driven a National before, a National 2, which is still out there in preservation somewhere. SHH um, something 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 X I think was the number on that one. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd talk a bit more about the Leyland National because it was a disruptive bus back in the day. Prior to this, you bought your chassis from a, a bus manufacturer and you got your body made by a coach builder uh, the national you bought the entire bus and uh, you could specify the seats the length uh, the two different lengths you could have a second door if you so wished this one hasn't got a second door um, depends on what you wanted and uh, yeah massively disruptful and these buses were everywhere I remember them fondly from my childhood I remember riding on them as night buses been taken to school on them um, yeah, I mean they were absolutely everywhere and the last ones I remember in service were with um, your bus uh, which began as Smiths of Bloxham and they had a fleet like this but were orange with a Volvo 
THD engine at the back, which makes a very lovely noise. And it's not a slow bus either. Well, you know, we've had it over 50. It's um, happy to um, move along quite nicely. But um, yeah, we're just going to find a spot to pull over and then I can have a go. Oh, the crockery's vibrating. Oh, MGB. Shared heritage with this bus. I love old buses. Is our light boy of choice. My turn. What's hilarious about this bus um, being a mobile kitchen now, just move our way forward, is this sign. Here we go then. We've got um, 790,000 miles on the clock, but Oh, it's kilometres, sorry, but who knows how many times that's gone round. Right, we shall... Um, oh, into second, we don't bother with first. And brake off. Let's get a feel for the brakes. Oh, they're fairly progressive. for a gap because I don't think we're going to be out accelerating many people oh the anticipation come on little mini or little big mini Perfect gear change straight off, that's not bad going. Always pause between your gear changes. And we're into top gear already. There's Ford Mall and out, blimey, yeah, she has got some get up and go. So that's 50 miles an hour already. But quite unusually, these have rack and pinion steering, although of course the steering rack is some way behind me. I thought he might do that. So here we go, the first time I've driven a bus on the road. A nice big wide road to at least make it quite easy. Crossing a bridge. I can think of no better way to mark 30,000 subscribers than driving a bus, to be honest. me um, hand on the shelf. I 
going to be testing the legendary handling, I don't think. Oh, we'll be quick on that one. So I have no idea how powerful the engine is because they did these um, THD engines in um, various power outputs from about 160 up to about 230 I think but um, originally she would have had a 180 horsepower engine uh, they later detuned it to try and make them smoke less it's a very British Leyland um, solution there to the problem Yeah, you're certainly aware that this is a rather wide vehicle. Well, that's okay, the mirrors are pretty good. I'm not sure I'm quite ready for threading it through a town centre just yet. But it's certainly the first time I've driven a vehicle that has a food hygiene rating, which I'm pleased to say is 5 out of 5. So this bus was um, built in 1973, which uh, I know they started making them in 72, so it's quite an early one. Uh, served its time, as I said, down in um, the Isle of Wight, uh, before coming up to Yorkshire on Pennine Transport. And that's where it was fitted with a Volvo engine, and sadly that rear roof pod was taken off, because it apparently didn't fit in the garage with the pod. back in the days when the drivers had to know how to use a gearbox. All automatics these days. Yes, I used to feel so sorry for the um, drivers of the night bus. you've committed to pulling out you're kind of committed to it in this yeah what an experience and yes I have bashed my hand not sure that's part of the original ergonomics, that shelf there. So 50 miles an hour is our speed limit today. Could take her up to 62 if we had some motorway to play with. She feels like she'd do it as well. I try to think what that does to the um, fuel economy. We're going to go to burn, or at least that general direction. Starting to get tighter.
not talking very much, it's because I'm concentrating. Quite placid at 30. I got waved at by a bus driver. distance we can just see Drax, one of the biggest power stations in the UK. These days burning biomass from North America because that's apparently better for the environment. I'd say the ride isn't superb but I've been on worse when it comes to buses. I don't think buses have got any better in terms of suspension. Make sure we don't go speeding past the police camera van. As much as I'm enjoying this, I'm not sure I'd fancy doing it every day, to be honest. And bus drivers have to deal with people as well. Bus drivers, I salute you. Let's go and visit the glass factory. need to work on my gear changes a bit, they're not the smoothest, but they could be worse. Let's not go to the glass factory. Yes, I'm so fond of the Leyland National, but I actually joined the Leyland National Preservation Group for a time, but um, yeah, quickly realised that um, cars are an expensive enough hobby when it comes to buses it's um, yeah a different ball game entirely just think about how much a basic service costs on a bus the sheer amount of oil cost of tires I mean it's all scary stuff gearboxes and all sorts and when the engine was right next to the driver engines miles away on this it sounds quite peaceful it's 
not so peaceful at the back of the bus. There we go, back, back where she was, near enough. Hanging out with the big boys in their trucks. Only remains to open the doors a bit and we're done. That was our experience driving a Leyland National. Look, we've even got our own little hub nut board to mark our 30,000 subscribers. So yeah, thank you very much, Mark, for the privilege. I've absolutely loved that. That was absolutely brilliant. And um, yeah, if you search on bus reg numbers, you can find out all the information you'd ever want to know about where this one um, served back in the day. And no, that, no, that isn't our puddle. Brilliant. And I love the condition, the slightly bent wiper blade. I mean, it's all perfectly hubnut. But there you go. Um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you if you are one of the 30,000 subscribers. I'm blown away by that. I really am. And um, yeah, don't forget the Hubnut store to buy all the merchandise. Um, just head to hubnut.org and there will be links. And I shall see you in a future video. Farewell. Best day ever.